All right, so we're gonna do this in a couple of steps. I got a brand new DJI Phantom 3. I got a, one of the bigger packages that basically has everything you need to start out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the boxes first and then uh, I'll get a closer up video where you can actually see what's in there. And we'll go through the whole process of getting everything set up and go from there. So here are the boxes that I got. It took about five to six days to get here. Um, my package came in the two different boxes. I believe one's probably going to be my backpack. I got the hard shell backpack and then the other should have everything else that I need but I don't know that for sure so we're going to find out. Um, like I said I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you how the boxes got here. It looks like they're in pretty good shape. I don't have really any damage. The only thing that I saw when it got here was that uh, you know FedEx had kind of split open the top but that's kind of to be expected with FedEx so all right we're gonna move on to the close-up so everybody has an idea um, again I ordered this online I live in Ohio in the northeastern spot, part of Ohio and again it took probably about five or six days this is uh, the first box here I'm gonna kind of get a look at it see what all's in there this is obviously the big one that is the DJI Phantom 3 Professional. Let's see, this should this kit should come with, yeah, that's the charging hub. Has the pro extra propellers, just in case you run it into a tree. The parts and components, I'm not sure. I think this might just be the propeller guard. Yeah, there it is, propeller guard comes in this kit and here are my three extra flight batteries so I think if I understood the description properly it should have four batteries but we'll see and then like I said I think this is the backpack it feels pretty light I think you can see my audience over there all right let's see yep this is the hard shell backpack that the whole kit should fit into they designed this really well I've actually seen a friend of mine has one of these hard shell backpacks for his uh, he actually has a, a Phantom 2, but um, I really like this backpack. It's really, it, it's well made, pretty solid. Um, the cushions on the back are awesome. They're like that gel foam. Um, again, it looks like it's pretty well made. It's not obviously designed to be carrying a bunch of weight. It's, it's pretty much designed just for the Phantom. That's it. We'll look on the inside here. And it's kind of odd, it threw me off the first time I saw it, that the back part is actually what opens all the way up and reveals the inside. So you've got your back plate here that holds everything down in. You've got some extra foam inserts. This is where the actual DJI Phantom 3 will sit in battery compartments and whatnot. So we'll figure out how all that works in a minute here. Let's move on to the next part. We'll set this to the side. And let's go ahead and open up the Phantom 3. And I'll do some more videos later. Um, I'd like to do some videos kind of showing getting it up and started, uh, first flights and that sort of thing. So there'll be more videos to come and I'll definitely be putting footage up of my flights as I go. Um, I'm gonna provide some links in the description also to some videos that I found helpful getting prepared, um, kind of what to buy, where to buy from. There's a really great uh, company here in Canton, Ohio um, named Flight Test, and I'll provide the link in the description for them. This looks like kind of your stickers and manuals and stuff. Anyways, Flight Test has several videos up on a bunch of different drones. They're really more into kind of the modding of different drones and kind of the build your own looks like one of my little tags here fell off but um, 
they have some great information in there. I would definitely suggest checking them out. All right, so let's see. This uh, is the propellers. It's a nice little bag. Feels like a silk bag. Oh, um, the weight of the box, I'd say it's, it's a couple of pounds. It's not hefty, but it's a, it, you can definitely feel the weight of the drone itself. So yeah, here are your main set of propellers. Looks like there might be an extra set in here too, so I might have three sets. Hopefully I don't ever need all three, but we'll have them if we need them. So that's pretty nice. I, I actually did not see this bag um, on some of the other videos, so I wonder if this is a new inclusion, but uh, maybe I'm just reading into it too much and other people didn't care to show it. Uh, let's see, here's the transmitter receiver, or the, the transmitter. This is the main transmitter for the DJI Phantom 3. Um, we'll go through the button scheme and everything once I know what I'm actually doing and can tell you what I'm doing. So, but uh, seems to be pretty simple from what I can see. Um, nice response. Everything is really fluid. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice little transmitter here. Uh, I do know that you can get some custom plates for the back here that add more uh, usability. You can actually get uh, DVI out, so you could actually run this to a, a TV or monitor. Um, I would definitely suggest that if you're doing like high-end video, you're trying to do some something for, you know, some sort of cinema film or something like that, I, I would suggest using that for sure. Um, this is going to get you decent quality onto a phone, but not great. So we'll set that off to the side. We'll go ahead and pull the drone out. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure... I think this is some kind of battery cover. I don't think this is the actual battery. Oh, it is. Yeah, so I do have four batteries. It's pretty nice. Um, Weight-wise, yeah, like I said, it's it's not it's not super hefty, but it is nice. I'm not sure what the USB on the front there is. Um, yeah, it looks nice. The legs, I've heard some, some different people say the legs feel a little bit wobbly, and they do. Um, I know you can get some supports. I'll probably just make some of my own just to kind of firm it up a little bit, but I don't know. We'll see. The They're not too expensive. DJI has a lot of really awesome accessories for this online that we'll check out. Um, I think this is the wrench for the propellers to tighten the propellers down. So, And I think that's it. Oh. Don't forget your silica packet, free of charge. And we'll take a look at this. This is the main charger. So that's it for in the box. We'll go ahead and set the box off to the side. Again, uh, you know, I did my research when I was looking at this. I, I watched a lot of videos, um, read a lot online. This really fits the bill for me. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of professional stuff, but I did want something that I could get professional quality video from, and this definitely fits the bill. To build my own or to custom mod uh, w one of the drones to do what this does is honestly almost impossible. It's, it's very hard to get it at this price range. Um, these retail for $12.99, I think, uh, pretty much everywhere. Um, I would suggest that if, if I had an order from DJI, if I didn't get the whole kit that I bought, I would have bought from Best Buy and used my um, Best Buy Reward Zone just because you get the extra points and you can use them on whatever you want, So, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, again, I did the research. There's tons of drones out there. What you get into when you get into modding is, you know, you have the price of the transmitter, you have the price of batteries, you have the, the like, the core module that you have to buy, and pretty soon everything racks up. Once you get down to the camera and the wireless transmitters and receivers that you need for, for the live video stream, man, it gets it gets into, like, the three dollars $4,000 range pretty quick. And DJI definitely has a great product. Um, their reviews online are really, really great. Um, I, I've seen these used on 
a bunch of different shows. Uh, Discovery uses them on a bunch of their shows. Mythbusters uh, used them on, uh, definitely on their final season. I saw several of them. They use this specific drone as well as some of the DJI Inspires, which are kind of more the professional model. They, they um, have more rotors and just kind of uh, a little bit better commercial feel to them than this. This is definitely the top end of kind of your residential version or your amateur version of it where you know it's it's the the weekend warriors who want to take it out and get some video. Uh, um, I'm personally going to try and just use it to take some great video shots of around my house. Um, I work for a fire department, I'll probably do some stuff with them, take some pictures of our training and things like that. So be prepared to see quite a few videos coming out in the future uh, and we'll just uh, go from there. We're going to take a look at what is inside the destructions. Looks like you got some different labels depending on what you're I kind of like that silver. Definitely not pink or purple. But we'll put those in there. Maybe my kids will put those on stuff. Uh, definitely when you get your drone or you decide that you think you might want to buy a drone, you should definitely go to the FAA.gov website. Um, you are now required to register uh, they say you're supposed to register your drone, but there's actually no place to register like the serial number of your drone. And so what you do is you actually register yourself as a drone pilot. And they'll give you like a almost like a pilot ID. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to put that ID somewhere on your drone. Now I'm sure in the future later they're going to want you to register all of your different uh, drones and aircraft and stuff like that. Um, it's really new. The, the FAA, I think, doesn't really know what to do with this yet. And the government is requiring some sort of oversight because people are doing some stupid stuff with these. You should be responsible. Make sure that you know the laws for the federal government and also your local and state regulations because all of those can apply differently. I mean, your county may not allow these to be flown and that just may be what's going on in your county. You'll have to find that stuff out. It's different everywhere. Uh, my county doesn't really have any laws for this yet, um, so they basically fall back on the federal laws. If there's no state or county laws, you fall back onto the federal laws. But just be aware that you know restrictions and regulations are coming. My best advice would be to get into this soon. Uh, go ahead and get registered get all the information done that you need to get done and then um, hopefully maybe we'll all get grandfathered in and not be required to get you know some kind of crazy pilot's license or something like that so check that out um, this is really cool that they I, I'm actually really happy that they put that in there just you know again remember be responsible they're extremely dangerous um, you can get hurt you can hurt somebody uh, in the right circumstance you can start fires with them you know the batteries are stable for the most part but they don't like getting hit um, so you know, you know just just be aware of what you're doing this is all the directions to get everything started so we're gonna go through that I'm gonna go through that off camera and then come back on and we'll get started um, but yeah like I said Definitely take the time, look at the guides, look at the manuals and all of that stuff. Um, really get an idea for what you're getting yourself into. The more responsible we can all be with this, the less restrictions the federal government's going to put on these things and the more fun we're going to have. Uh, anybody that's getting into this is really getting into this just just to enjoy themselves uh, you know it's a great hobby to get into for years and years people have been flying remote control airplanes and you know doing the the hobby rockets and things like that that are that are dangerous for sure but um, they've been responsible about it and so they haven't needed to put in all these restrictions and regulations against them and uh, unfortunately with these being more readily available it's getting um, it's getting a little bit crazy so anyways we're gonna take a look at that later uh, shows what's in the box 
Uh, the accessories looks like in the accessories there's SD card, yeah, the propeller removal clamp, um, some stickers, and all sorts of good stuff there. So we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at the battery, find out how to best care for the battery. Um, I do know that these batteries uh, do not like to be stored on a full charge. So uh, take a look at that. Definitely get some information about that and uh, know what you're getting yourself into. And th honestly, the longer and, and the better you care for your batteries, the longer they'll last. And that's really what you want. I mean, nobody wants to go ba buying batteries from DJI every couple of months. So figure out what you're getting yourself into. And uh, I'm going to read this and then we'll come back. All right, so um, reading through the directions a little bit, it looks like, you know, like with all things, um, nothing comes fully charged. And obviously that's for the safety of the batteries. When batteries are fully charged, they tend to swell when they're stored um, or in transport when they go through different at altitudes and temperature ranges and things like that. It's just not, they're not, they're not very safe that way. So um, it's better to have them at a, like a 40% charge, which looks like that's pretty much where this is. I don't know if you can see that too well, but uh, there, it's like at about a 40%. So um, first step, we're going to go ahead and unpack the hub that came with the kit that I got. I'll also put a, a link in the description for the exact kit that I bought off of uh, DJI. That way you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at and kind of the price range for uh, what all I've gotten. So just a regular old box. Sorry, I'm kind of looking over at my phone every little bit to make sure it's actually recording because I've done this before. Oh look, we have a visitor. That's my puppy. All right, so here it is. Here is the hub. Um, I believe that this, again, will charge all four batteries at the same time, which is gonna be awesome. And I'm 90% sure it uses just the regular charger that uh, comes with the GoPro. Everything in the white boxes comes with the GoPro. So like this is the accessories. We'll open that up real quick too. In the accessories comes yeah like I said this is the clamp to uh, help you take off it, it, what you'll what you'll notice when you use this more this uh, motor here will spin freely so when you're trying to torque on your propeller which these are set to automatically torque down they will um, torque themselves down with flight so uh, they're not going to come off, but you definitely want to make sure and, and tighten them down as much as you can, you know, hand tight before your flight and make sure that they're definitely tight. They're not going to come off. Um, but when you go to try and take it off, this motor spins. So you use this clamp here, get a better look, this clamp here to clamp down that motor, which then allows you to torque that off. It also comes with some extra rubber bushings for the gimbal mount on the bottom there. Um, I have the gimbal lock on right now, so that's why that's the way it is. So, but yeah, you can see the little bushings here kind of help support the whole thing and keep it from going nuts. So, so uh, definitely always want to have that gimbal locked when you're transporting and just keep that gimbal lock on there until you're ready to fly. I, uh, I would suggest verifying that you've taken it off right before you fly. Maybe create a checklist so that you don't get up there and realize that your gimbal's locked and gotta come right back down. So, again, all the white boxes come with the DJI. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up this bad boy here. which is the charger. Set that off to the side. Oh look, it comes with a little USB cable. Probably like most things, it's for Androids, not iPhones. Yep, micro USB at least. So um, that was nice of them to include that. I, I do have an Android tablet, so I could probably use that. But generally I think I'm just gonna use my iPhone. Um, just your regular default um, kind of laptop charger, charging cable, and then here's your actual 
a brick transformer. Kind of classic with everything. I think this is the charger here. The actual one that plugs into this charger. And then this would go to the transmitter. This is a transmitter, not a remote control. Um, if you get into this hobby quite a bit, you'll find people looking at you weird when you call this a remote control. This is a transmitter. It transmits the signals from all of these different inputs. Each one of these inputs represents another channel. So you can actually figure out how many channels this is depending on how many movements you have. So this is probably, uh, I would say like a five or six channel device just because it's got the wireless and some other stuff. So um, again, plugs into the transmitter somewhere right there. So you can see that right there. That's where it plugs in. And we'll do that in a little bit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all this set up and we'll come back in a little bit when everything's charged and we'll proceed from there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works, which is kind of neat. Um, it actually comes with its own little protector clip here, which you can kind of see. Um, but yeah, you just flip that open, slides in underneath here, and it's ready to go. Very cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the batteries, which are over here. And we're going to get the battery off the drone itself and get everything set up to start charging. Move my phone out of the way. So yeah, it just clips in right there charging. So let's take a look at the next one. I have no idea how long this is going to take to charge. I will uh, try and keep an eye on that and let you guys know when I know how long it takes. Uh, I would assume for as large of a battery as it is, it's going to be kind of like a laptop battery. It's a LiPo. Um, it's a 4480 milliamp hour battery. So have my helpers here not helping. I am not sure if it is capable of multi-charging. Um, it doesn't look like the other battery is charging right now. So it, it may not be able to charge more than one at a time. But we'll see. I guess the uh, typical guy obviously didn't read all the directions. I just know that uh, all this is going to have to be charged at some point and it's going to be the easiest way to get everything done. So we'll just go ahead and throw it on the charger. I really like this hub. If you're going to have multiple batteries, I would suggest doing so. Not sure. Yeah, that doesn't seem to really make any difference. All right, so I'll take a look at the directions here, find out what it says and go from there. We'll be back. All right, I decided to come back, uh, read through the directions a little bit. Yes, it only charges one at a time, and it actually smart charges. So it looks for the one with the highest power currently and charges that one first, which is going to be this one that came with the drone. Um, then it will cycle through and charge the other ones as needed. So that's what it's doing right now. The yellow means that it's not charging, but it does recognize that a battery is there. You can see there's a yellow. Green flashing means that it's charging and obviously you can see the charging meter here it started out it was like one in a little bit of the second and it's all the way up to the third now so I think it's doing pretty good um, red I believe like red flashing means there's something wrong with your power um, so that's probably to protect the battery from getting the wrong type of polarity or something like that 
and then uh, green solid means that the battery is charged all the way. I'm going to go ahead and take the plastic covering that came with the transmitter off so that we can charge this puppy up too while we're going. Kind of kill two birds with one stone. Have my assistant here. Brought his blocks. All right. Let's see. And uh, from what I've seen online, you can actually remove the um, holder for the phone. I guess they call it the mobile device holder. So you can actually mo remove that. Mo probably mobile device mount, but whatever. You know. So. We'll go ahead and remove it. It's protective little plastic here. Everything's got to have 10 million pieces of plastic. All right. So we'll go ahead and look at this. Um, somewhere I lost my sleeve here. Uh, if you look here, you can see, uh, well, hopefully if I can get in there close enough. You can see it says F P A F. P is going to be what you want to fly it on most of the time. That's going to be using GPS to try and maintain altitude and position. Um, that's going to be the easiest way to fly. I would definitely uh, encourage anybody to fly it that way first. And then um, once you've got a really good handle, know exactly what you're doing, then maybe proceed from there. But definitely first up use that because that would just be ridiculous to fly this thing without the GPS positioning. Um, anyways, I was going to plug this in so we can go ahead and get charged. So we'll look at, here's the port right here. It's got a little like rubber flap, kind of see. So I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to reach down here. And uh, we're going to plug this puppy in. Get it going. So you see the indicator lights here that it is charging currently. Um, we'll go ahead and leave that for a while and we'll come back later. Okay, so everything has finished charging. Um, it took actually probably almost two hours to charge the controller and uh, the battery. The battery itself actually only took about an hour, but uh, I, I don't think it was as low as the transmitter was. So the transmitter took a, a good two hours, easy. All right, so <clears throat> the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to download the DJI Go app, which I have an iPhone, you can get it from the App Store. Um, I downloaded this previously so that uh, it would be all set and ready to go. Yeah, it's locked down real good. Um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and connect. Um, the other thing that it, it said in the directions was to make sure and connect your device to the controller. I assume this is probably how it communicates, but I don't know. Um, I'm actually gonna look for a short cable to do this with. I think I might have one already, but we're gonna see. So we're going to turn on the, you want to press it and then hold it down for two seconds and it will be on. Um, apparently we have to turn on the battery for the we'll see. Battery is good. All right, we'll go ahead and plug this in. It's pretty dummy proof. You basically only install it one way. So it says turn on the aircraft battery. So you turn it on, you press it once, and then hold it down for two seconds, just like the controller. Ooh. It says uh, connect your mobile device to the USB and enter camera mode. So let's get out of here.
we're gonna go ahead and go through the tutorial if this is dumb then uh, we'll just skip through it later so batteries are good it's currently set to 30 meters for the home I'm gonna switch it to 120 meters just because I've got a lot of trees and stuff in my area so I don't want it to hit something and start flying let's see it says you must activate your aircraft the first time you connect it to the app doing so will activate your one-year warranty so we'll go ahead and get the one-year warranty um, I'm gonna name mine Bebop Yes, I realize that. Oh, we'll keep it with the default mode. These are just different modes of controlling it. I wish that I could alternate that, but whatever. It's it'll work. I'll work it out. <coughs> the C1 and C2. C1 and C2 buttons are down at the bottom there. This is C1, C2. And uh, they control camera forward and down and gimbal follow. So I'm sure we'll learn more about that. Choose your preferred unit and video output. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to do NTSC. I, obviously, since I live in the US, I want NT NTSC. I'm okay with metric. Um, I don't really mind metric. I use that for other things uh, as EMS and things like that. So we're going to keep it in beginner mode just for the uh, first part. Um, says that it's limited to 98 feet or 30 meters in height and 30 meters uh, of distance. Definitely want to keep it at that for now. And um, it's going to want to go ahead and okay so I finished signing in so that I could activate there wasn't really much after that point it just needed to activate the actual uh, drone itself um, now I'm gonna go ahead and enter the flight simulator which I've actually been pretty excited about this um, and hopefully it's gonna be very helpful so here it shows you kinda of the whole setup how everything works um, I realized that I need to upgrade the firmware so we're gonna go ahead and take care of that and we'll come back in a few minutes um, you can kinda of see the overall layout right now I hope let me uh, take a look here you should be able to see the overall outlook of everything so we'll get a good close-up of that and you can see that it's downloading the firmware right now so we will uh, come back in a few minutes. Okay. Okay, I have uh, completed the firmware upgrade in the app on the remote controller, um, what they call the remote controller, the transmitter. Um, and I proceeded to complete the upgrade on the drone itself, the craft itself. Um, on the side of the craft right here is a micro SD card what you do is you download on your computer um, the firmware update information and then you just dump it right onto the root of the hard drive or the um, SD card there so you don't have to go drill into any folders or anything like that just drag and dump it onto the card put it right back into the device turn on the drone and it will begin the firmware upgrade itself you can kind of hear the noise that the gimbal makes that's apparently how you know that it's done once it's done you're gonna go ahead and power it off now the batteries require a f uh, firmware upgrade themselves as well I'm not really sure why I assume that's just so that everything can communicate properly and you know exactly how much battery life and all of that stuff is, is being used um, so all that diagnostic information is probably stored on the board of the battery itself. So um, in order to perform 
the upgrades of the batteries, I decided I'd go ahead and show you. Uh, I've done two so far. The No, th this will be the third one. Uh, the fourth one is still waiting to charge up, so we'll do that one later. You power it up. <coughs> the drone's going to go through its own little setup, initial setup and orientation stuff. And then it's going to recognize that this needs to upgrade. And you'll hear the, the gimbal is making noise now. So that's the noise it makes when it starts the upgrade process. And then you'll see the lights change right here. In just a moment. Yep. And now it's beginning the firmware upgrade. Uh, I tried to time it, but it's really random. It, it seems to take between two and a half and three minutes to upgrade the firmware on the batteries. Again, I, I don't really know the full purpose of, of why the firmware needs to be updated often, but if the manufacturer says to upgrade it, I'd say upgrade it. See this one, this one's already done and it took maybe 30 seconds. So once the firmware is fully upgraded, you can power the device back off and on again. Once it is back on, it goes through its whole process and it's going to read and see if that needs upgraded. <coughs> and you're going to see an overall status of normal on the app. It might be hard to see that, but the whole point has been updated. Please check it on the map. at that point, you should be good to go. So that is the upgrade status. I am going to go back to the menu, the home menu, go to, oh boy, is it, I think it's under me, DJI Academy, and then the flight simulator. We're going to check out the flight simulator. <coughs> Try and learn what we're doing here. Alright, so start the motors up. Let's ensure conditions are safe. Yes, conditions are safe. The home point has been take off. Motors have been started. I don't know if this is as responsive as the device is going to be later or not, but we'll see. Bring her down nice and slow. And then go ahead and have the device land. And we landed. Go ahead and take off again. Just kind of practice. Come back here a little bit. And now we're coming back.
All right, so that's kind of the flight simulator. It doesn't seem to be too crazy. Okay, finally, I wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the backpack looks like and how everything fits. Um, it, it is very solidly in there. I like the strap here that kind of helps protect um, your uh, transmitter and the drone itself and keep everything nice and tight in there. It's all form fitted so it, it just zips in there solid and awesome. Um, the only downside that I see is there doesn't seem to be a lot of extra space for anything other than what you're gonna be using. So, uh, you know, like, I'm not sure where I'm gonna fit this here. And uh, the extra propellers, I think I can fit a few in here, but I don't th think I can fit all of these, which obviously I sh shouldn't need all of those. But, you know, if I'm going out on a long shoot, I might wanna take everything I've got, just in case. Um, I think that there are spots for the accessories. I think that that's what this is here. More than likely, I mean, it seems to fit pretty well. Other than that, it's a great little uh, backpack. It's got a nice spot here for, um, you know, your iPad or I'm probably, like I said, I'm probably gonna use my Android tablet and my phone more than anything. It depends on if I'm doing GoPro filming at the same time. I like to have my phone do the GoPro filming. Um, it just works a little bit better. But all in all, it's a awesome little drone. I can't wait to get out there and start flying it. Um, I'm sure you guys will see lots of videos eventually of that. Um, I think I've pretty well got the table cleaned off at this point. So I'm gonna call it a wraps. This again is just the um, blade propeller guards. And uh, yeah, that's, that's everything. So uh, I'll be uploading this in a little bit and uh, we'll have some more videos coming soon. Please subscribe if you like this. Uh, share the video if you like it. I'm going to try and add more stuff as I get to it. And as I get more involved with the drone, I'm going to keep doing more videos with that as well. So I uh, look forward to seeing you. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to leave some uh, notes in the description, some links to some other videos that I use to get knowledgeable on all this stuff. And uh, just some really great podcasts and video casts that I use. Um, in my filming. So we will uh, see you soon. Bye.